this is the MacBook Pro 16 and oh my god, it's got to be one of the best computers. Probably the goat of laptops going around now. Yeah, it is truly amazing. But it has one big problem. One big bottleneck that, you know, makes it hard for creators. And we're going to fix that today and I'll show you how. By the way, hooked up to a QD OLED monitor. Oh my god, it is amazing. I do have a video on that. Check out the description. Now let's talk about what is this bottleneck. And basically, if you go to my MacBook Pro 16 review or my video that says all the issues with this laptop, one of the things I said is slow Wi-Fi. Yes. Now this was just suck and see. This was just me transferring files to my NAS, which is 10 gigabit, and it was taking a really long time. I didn't have to measure it i review a lot of laptops and if you go have a look at jared tech's macbook pro 16 review he actually tested out the wi-fi and it was the slowest out of every single laptop he's used now we're going to fix this okay now why does it have really slow wi-fi i suspect they're using broadcom chips so not intel killer or qualcomm also i strongly suspect that this is one of apple's tricks in its arsenal to get great battery life now it's not going to affect you for daily use if you're just downloading stuff off the internet web surfing and stuff like that it's perfectly fine it's wi-fi 6 you're not going to notice anything it's when you transfer a huge amount of files oh my word look at this this is almost a terabyte of files from my qd oled videos now i've got to transfer that somewhere uh on this mac yeah it might take a while but the time i notice it is when i'm trying to pull assets from my nas my 10 gig nas which doesn't do full 10 gig speeds but it does do nearly 500 megabytes per second i get nowhere near those speeds with this laptop and then when i'm trying to dump stuff on it in fact i don't do it anymore here's the solution to the biggest bottleneck on these macbook pros and what we're looking at is here yes this is the crucial x8 portable ssd and i actually have thunderbolt ssds i'll tell you why this is better than thunderbolt ssds of course this can be used pc mac android you can even use it on xbox and playstation playstation 4 xbox one you can even store games on it etc it is built tough to withstand drops etc it is usb-c so let's unbox it and have a look so here's the box here this one here is the two terabyte crucial x8 portable ssd you can get up to two terabytes it says 1050 megabytes per second throughput there we will put that to the test i'm going to test it on a mac here but i will test it on windows and etc and i'll do a full review on this so inside the box you get a type c to usb type a adapter you get a usb c cable you get the unit itself this is a two terabyte model as i said and you get some literature in there as well and that's about it that's all you need to know there now if i was actually going to transfer that 667 gigabytes honestly over wi-fi it would take hours probably overnight it's just way too long and what's the great thing about this is not only is it usb type c it's usb type a and i do have a thunderbolt drive okay but there's a big problem with the thunderbolt drives maybe slightly faster than this not much faster to be honest especially once you fill the cache and they sort of you know throttle down a bit beauty about this and this is based on experience and trust me now the best thing about this is it's USB-C so that can be used anywhere or USB type A with the adapter so you can use it on anything right Thunderbolt you're very limited to what you can use it on and I've been caught out before where I took it away with me and I tried to connect it to a laptop that actually I thought I had Thunderbolt didn't actually and only had USB-C and yeah you know what happened I couldn't <laughs> take off my files so this is universal it's going to work on anything mac pc ipad xbox one chromebooks ps4 pro and also it is crucial all right so it's crucial you know that's reliable you know how good crucial are if you don't know that's micron and it's backed up by a three-year warranty so let's have a look at the speeds of this so let's have a look here and i will test it on windows this is another good test for actually these mac products which sometimes do not get the full read and write speed so we're getting 800 writes there and 870 reads so that's good speed now let's see which this thing would take overnight on wi-fi let's see how fast it's going to do it here we'll see what it predicts there there you go 13 minutes yeah this thing that would take me overnight basically it would take hours it is amazing this thing and it's universal use it everywhere crucial you know it's going to work you know it's reliable uh, what more do you want i will test it on a pc now have a look at that you can see it's getting the advertised speeds there you can see the read speeds are over 1000 we're on the mac it was like 800 right 
So even though the Wi-Fi is the biggest bottleneck on the Macs, the M1 still have the USB-C or Thunderbolt problem where they're not getting the full speeds. We're getting 1,000. It's about 200 megabytes difference. So I don't know what's going on with these M1 Macs, but uh, it's been a problem since the original M1. And as you can see, with Windows, you're getting the full speed. This is a great product. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get it. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Tally ho.